Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at Ellingham diagrams. Ellingham diagrams are a use of the delta G calculation specifically for metal extraction reactions. Whilst no longer a formal part of the advanced higher course, they are an application of the delta G calculation and could be used for problem solving. Here is the delta G calculation that you are used to using. We can rearrange this delta G calculation to be in this form. When we do this, it should be clear that this could be the equation of a straight line. When we use the equation in this form, delta G is our Y value, temperature is our X value, minus delta S is our gradient M, and delta H is the y-intercept c. Using this information and graphs plotted, we can actually calculate delta G, delta S, delta H, or t um, temperature for different reactions. The reason that we can use this as a straight line is because for most reactions, delta H and delta S remain fairly constant whilst we change delta T. Only delta G will then change. Try using the rearrangement of the delta G reaction to work out the temperature, delta H and delta S for this reaction. Pause the video now. When working out temperature, we have to have a look at the graph and find the point at which delta G becomes zero. We can see that on the graph here if we draw a line in from the zero point down. This crosses the temperature axis at 300 degrees Kelvin. This is the temperature at which the reaction becomes feasible. To estimate the delta H for the reaction, we need to extend the line until it hits the Y axis. Delta H is the Y intercept for this reaction. We can see that this crosses the Y axis at 400 kilojoules per mole. To be able to calculate delta S, we need to use the answers to the two previous parts. We're going to set delta G to be zero. We know that delta H is 400. We know that the temperature at which it becomes feasible, so when delta G is zero, is 300. And that leaves us with delta S. This comes out in kilojoules per mole, so we need to times by a thousand to be able to get into joules per mole. So our answer is 1,330 joules per mole per Kelvin. So how do we use Ellingham diagrams to be able to work out when metals can be extracted? The lines that are plotted on an Ellingham diagram are combustion reactions which are shown with using one mole of oxygen. You'll find the combustion reaction for a metal and you'll find the combustion reaction for the reagent that we're using to extract the metal. Common reagents are carbon, carbon monoxide and hydrogen. There are usually two or more lines shown on an Ellingham diagram. The lower of the two lines at any point on the diagram is the one which would proceed as written. So for example, in this diagram, up until this temperature here, this reaction would proceed as written, whereas after this temperature, it would switch to be this reaction. The upper line would get flipped over and the delta G value for the line gets reversed. Ideally, when we're looking at metal extraction, the upper line is the metal reaction. 
You can see that this is written in the form of metal combustion, however we are trying to extract the metal from the oxide. The temperature at which the two lines intersect is the point at which the reaction becomes feasible. Where you see kinks in the line, such as here and here, you have changes of state. So how would we use this diagram here to work out when we could extract zinc from zinc oxide? We're going to look at this for two temperatures. First of all, we're going to look at 1000 degrees. We need to write out the desired equation. So this is the extraction equation. This is where we would have two moles of zinc oxide plus two moles of carbon monoxide to produce two moles of zinc plus two moles of carbon dioxide. We're then going to write out the equations for the two reactions shown on the graph as they are. So we have two moles of zinc plus oxygen to give two moles of zinc oxide and at 1000 degrees the delta G value is minus 500. We're going to do the same for the other equation. So we have two moles of carbon monoxide plus oxygen to give two moles of carbon dioxide. At 1000 degrees, the value for the carbon monoxide reaction is around 370. We need to flip over this top reaction to allow us to combine the two reactions to get this original desired equation. That means we're going to do the same to the delta G value. So this will now be plus 500. If we add these two values together, we'll get an overall delta G value of 130 kilojoules per mole. This means that at 1000 degrees the reaction would not be feasible, and we can see that as we are below this interception point. We're going to repeat the process at 2000 degrees. We have the same desired equation of zinc oxide plus carbon monoxide to give zinc plus carbon dioxide. We have the two same equations, but this time we have different delta G values. So we're looking at 2000 degrees and we can see the delta G value for the zinc equation is zero, whereas for the carbon monoxide equation, the delta G value this time is minus 200. If we had a value other than zero for the zinc equation, it would get reversed, and then we would add them together. This time we get a delta G value of minus 200, which shows us that this reaction is feasible at 200 degrees, at 2000 degrees, which we can see from it being above the interception point, where the zinc equation, which gets flipped over, is above the carbon monoxide equation. Ellingham diagrams can be very complex with lots of different equations on them. This Ellingham diagram shows three different metals which can be used for extraction or to be extracted from and it also shows hydrogen and carbon. The different interception points show the different points at which reactions become feasible. If we're trying to extract sodium from sodium oxide, we can do that using carbon at temperatures above around 1300. That is this point here, where the sodium line is above the carbon line. If we want to extract sodium using hydrogen, however, we need to go to a higher temperature at around 1550, where we can see now the sodium line is above the hydrogen line. To extract titanium using carbon, we need to go above 1800, which is here. To extract magnesium, we need to go above 1900, However, magnesium can also be extracted using titanium 
as they cross over at this point here, at around 1950. To be able to extract magnesium using hydrogen, we need to go even higher to around 2450, to this crossing over point here. If we wish to extract sodium using titanium, we're able to do this at all temperatures, as this sodium line is always above the titanium line. I'm now going to show you a series of questions which use Ellingham diagrams. Pause the video now and try this question. So for this question we have titanium, magnesium and carbon and we're considering all three species. So from the graph we're having a look at when we can use magnesium to reduce titanium oxide and when we can use carbon to reduce titanium oxide. So titanium oxide is the middle line here and we're looking for when we can use each of the reagents. To be able to use magnesium to reduce titanium oxide we need the magnesium line which will stay as it's written to be underneath the titanium line. That happens at this point here, so that's below 2000 Kelvin. When we're using carbon, we need the carbon line to be underneath the titanium line, and that happens here, above 2000 degrees. Therefore, C is our answer. Pause the video now. In this question, we're using the diagram to work out what range of temperatures we'd be able to use to reduce aluminium oxide using magnesium. We need to find the point at which magnesium is below the aluminium line. We can see that on the diagram here. We have a crossing over point here, which we can indicate with a line. And that gives us a temperature of below 1750 degrees. Pause the video now. Here we have zinc oxide and carbon monoxide. And we're trying to work out when we can use carbon monoxide to extract zinc. We need to have our carbon monoxide line below the zinc line. So the zinc line is here and our carbon monoxide line is here. So we're going to be above the intersection point. So we can put in a line to show where the intersection point is. And that shows us that we would be at any temperature above 1300 degrees. So that gives us an answer of C. Pause the video now. In this question, we're trying to show that it would not be possible to extract titanium from titanium oxide using carbon at 1000 degrees Kelvin. The first step here is to write out the reaction equation that we are trying to do. So we're trying to take titanium oxide, we are reacting it with carbon, to produce titanium plus carbon dioxide. The two equations from the graph that we're going to use are titanium plus oxygen to produce titanium oxide and carbon plus oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. We're then going to look at the values for delta G at 1000 Kelvin. So the value of delta G for the titanium oxide at 1000 Kelvin is around minus 800. The value of delta G for the carbon reaction is around minus 450. The titanium reaction is going to be reversed as will the value for delta G 
which will now become positive. If we now add these two values together, we get an overall delta G value for 350. As this is a positive value, this shows that this reaction would not be feasible at 1000 degrees. This is also below the intersection point, at which point the carbon line goes below the titanium line. This is where the reaction would become feasible at 2000 Kelvin. Pause the video now. For this final question, we're looking at zinc and aluminium being used to extract chromium from chromium oxide. The chromium line is in the middle and we have the zinc line above and the aluminium line below. As the aluminium line is always below the chromium line here, aluminium should be used to extract chromium from chromium oxide. Thank you for watching my video on Ellingham Diagrams. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for regular updates on new videos and flashcards every day. Bye for now.